Hey guys, this is uh, Daniel McLaughlin, Professional Service Engineer with Jamf, and this video is going to be how to set up a brand new Active Directory server on a Windows test. So if we jump over to my Windows server here, and I'll just sign in. So this is a completely clean Windows 2012 R2 server. And just using the trial for the moment, you can see it's 180 days remaining there. So no license needed at this stage. By default, when it logs in, it's going to open up Server Manager. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Manage. I'm going to add roles and features here. Okay, just let it finish doing its thing. The only thing I've done to this server is I've set its name. If you go to Windows Explorer here and go Computer, System Properties, you can see that's the computer name that I've given this one. That's all I've done. Uh, another best practice to do would be on the device manager. Oh, sorry, no, go back to control back panel, network and internet, network and sharing center, and you would likely give this a static IP. Change it after settings. Okay, if we look at the details here, it's currently got an IP of this, but that is on DHCP. So. I won't worry about setting a static IP just for this uh, video, but that's something that's best practice to do out in production. So I'll close this here. So I'm gonna go manage, I'm gonna add roles and features. I'm gonna go next. It's gonna be a role-based feature. Pointing it to this server here. And I'm gonna choose Active Directory Domain Services. It's gonna include a whole bunch of other things for us. So we're gonna go add features and we'll go next. Leave everything else as a default, next, and install. So this would be an Active Directory type server that you can use to bind Windows and uh, Mac clients to, as well as doing it for authentication. So it should go through and do a whole bunch of uh, feature installation. Depending on the speed of your server will factor how long this will take. So we'll just give it a bit of time here. Okay, so the um, features are finished completing, so we'll just close this. We've got this little caution up here, we still have some actions to do. So we're going to prevent this, promote this server to a domain controller. So if this is the very first Active Directory, you would actually going to say add it to a new forest. And then this is where you give the domain. So for this example, I'm just going to call it jamfpro.services. Um, other organizations, you might have it as, say, mycompany.com, or you might have it as mycompany.lan. Just uh, try and avoid doing something .local, as it would conflict with Max trying to bind as uh, Bonjour. So you would not do something like... You wouldn't do mycompany.local. That's actually not recommended by Microsoft or Apple. You could do my my.company.local, or you could do something like mycompany.lan, private, whatever you like, just try not to have it something.local. So I'll use jamfpro.services for this example here. We go next. Okay. Going to set us like a, it's going to set up a DNS server for us automatically. We just have to set a, an admin password. So I'm just going to do password in here. Leave all this as the defaults. The NetBIOS name is generally the prefix that you would see before like a login on a Windows site. Um, in this case, it'll be we set our domain to be jamfpro.services, so the NetBIOS name would be jamfpro.
Okay, we go next. Okay, leave all these as the defaults. Next. Just validating that uh, it's meeting all the prereqs. Again, this can sort of take some time depending on how, how much resources your virtual machine has. Okay, we've got some warnings in here, but that's all fairly straightforward. It's saying it's on DHCP, which is what I already pointed out there, but everything's okay and we just go install. So it's going to start this process here, go through all that stuff. At the end of it, it's going to require a reboot and it'll reboot as a domain controller. Okay, once it's finished, we're about to be signed out. Okay, it's gonna close, close. It would reboot automatically for us in a minute, but we'll just do that for us. I'll say restart, I'll say it's planned. Okay, so it's back and rebooted. So we'll see here now it's a NetBIOS in front of it here. So enter in the password that we entered in as part of that uh, setup to promote it to, to main controller. Once it signs in, server manager will just open as normal. But we should see the service appear on the left hand side saying uh, AD. Once it finishes loading here. There we are, AD directory services, as well as DNS. So we go in the tools in here, and I can see I've got my Active Directory tools in here now. I can go to users of computers. I can see there's my domain, Jamf Pro services, and inside that, the default containers and uh, organizational units that are created. I can make a new one in here, say new uh, organizational unit. I'll just call it uh, staff. Inside that, I can make a new account. So I'll go Daniel Lachlan, Daniel Lachlan. Go next, I'll give it a password. Um, I don't have to change. I can change it, but I'll, my password never expires. That's fine. I'll go next and finish. Okay, so that's an AD server set up. So if I go over to a, a Mac here for me now, 
just wake this one up. No. Not to reboot that one. Oh, there we go. So this is not bound to anything. I'll just sign in here. We go to system preferences. Something very important to note about whenever you are actually binding a Mac to Active Directory is you need to make sure the time is in sync with what the server says. Now as part of turning on an Active Directory domain controller, what it also becomes is a network time server. So you could go to date and time if you wanted to always enforce this to be in sync Current day and time. Okay, that shows that can be very slow. Let's go to the day and time here. And I unlock this. Oh. There we go. And set the date and time automatically. I could actually type in the IP address of the server. So if I just bring that up here, it'll be config. So 172.16.230.129, I could type that in here, 172.16.230.129, okay, yep, we have enter, and we should see the time flicker a little bit. If we like, we can even untick this, and let's say we change it to be a couple minutes out. Well, in its current time, because that's actually too far out from what the current time is server, this machine would not bind. We turn this back off and you see the time changed automatically. So it is getting its, um, the time from that same server. So we know that it's always going to be in sync. What we can do now is we can go to our users and groups. Or we can even actually open up the directory utility application. And this is what we would use to bind. Um, similar features that you would see through the Jamf um, Pro web interface where you're creating a binding script is using the same me methods that you see in directory utility. So authenticate. I go to login options. Uh, another important thing to note actually, I did for almost forget this. Time is very important. Also that the device is on the right network. So if we have a look at what it's using for the DNS, it's using the router as a DNS server. And that's not what we'd actually want. We'd want the IP address of the domain controller to be that. So again, 72.16.230.129. Alright, search domain I can leave as local domain, that's fine, or I would change that to say pro.services. Okay, so if I go to my users and groups now, I can go to network cat server now I could type in the server here but if I open up actually the direct utility I might get some more features that I want to enable. So I'll unlock this. And if you are making a binding uh, script through Jav Pro, these are where the options you see that. Oh, I must have typed that twice. So double click on Active Directory, enter in the domain which would be javpro.services the computer ID, this will be the machine name that we'll be wanting to bind. Now, they have like a limit on what how many characters it must be. You can see this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. My machine name is actually greater than that. But uh, Active Directory just uh, complains if it's anything over 15. So we might just change this to say Daniel's down to demo. We might just call this Daniel MacBook Air. Yeah. I go to my options here as well. I can choose to create a local mobile account. So this is something where the credentials will be cached locally so that they could sign back in using AD credentials that need to be on the domain. Uh, very useful if you've got laptops that are leaving the network and they need to be able to sign it at home. 
Uh, administrative will be, okay, allowing administration by. Any users that would be a member of these groups will have local admin rights over the machine. And we'll say no for the moment there. I'll go okay. I didn't actually hit the buy button, did I? So let's try that again. Jamf Pro dot services, Daniel MacBook Air, and I'll create mobile and I'll go bind. What it's next asking me for is an account that has privileges to bind. So that would be my administrator account. And the location where I want to put the machine record into. So the default being the CN computers. This would be the path that you see in your Active Directory. So you can see computers here as a container. So that's what the CN stands for. And inside computers, we have nothing in here. So we'll put it in there. Other organizations might want to put them into a specific location. Go OK. And it's bound. So what I should be able to do now is I go log out as my local account. And while I'm looking at that, I can refresh this here. I should see there's my machine record. And if I bring it back to the login screen for this Mac, which is, seems to be struggling a little bit. Right, let's see, I've got this other option here now. So I should be able to use my AD credentials. Go sign in. Thinking about that. Good old spinning wheel of death. Running two VMs at the same time is probably not too happy with it. And it should get itself through and it will have signed in with that AD account. Right, I'll say I don't sign in. And there we go, I have signed in oh, as an AD account. Go to user accounts and groups here. We'll see that my AD account is listed in here as a standard user because I didn't give it admin privileges. And that's a mobile account. Uh, again, I would look at finding ways around needing to bind. Um, using something like Enterprise Connect or Nomad are great uh, alternatives to binding a machine. Use cases for binding would be if it's a shared device, so like a lab machine, signing in and signing out multiple users, um, or if there's some 802.1x network settings that require a machine record to be in Active Directory. But that's it. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. If anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out to me through the usual channels. Thanks very much.